Hey guys and welcome to a new Dungeon Defenders 2 video. I'm your host Mr. Peter and let's beat Prime 1 Cold Blood Blinking. That right there is the Goblin King. We have to please him with gold. If we don't, he will blow up the crystal. On the top right, it has an infinite symbol. The wave will end when the king is pleased with the amount of gold that we have gathered. This prime is definitely different from the previous two. On this one, we'll have to be very proactive. You'll see why very soon. What do we know about this map? Little Horn Valley has 1000 DU space. It has five lanes, two sub objectives, and three flyers. That means every lane must be 180 DU or less. For 5 lanes, that will be 900 DU in total. That will leave us with 100 DU for the flyers. Looking at the lanes, we have a lot of melee units and 2 chaos units. We need to keep an eye out on those flying coal blobs. Once they get weak, they'll try to dive into anything. And we have sub objectives to protect. Once those sub objectives are destroyed, it's going to make the game much more harder for us. Also, a side note before we check our defences, there are no cyborgs in Primes ever, so you don't have to worry about your flame rod being stunned by them. There are assassins in this Prime, they come a bit later in the game, keep that in mind. We'll be using our flame rod which has anti-chaos and anti-melee, just so we can take out those cold blobs. LSA for the bosses, Proton for the slow, the Reflect Beam for damage, and our training dummy to buff our defences using the shard Power Pylon. Again, we won't be using Destructive Pylon because not many of you guys will have Destructive Pylon. This tower plays an important role in this prime and I'll explain this once we start the wave. This is the setup that I'm going to use, just like the previous video but without the boost aura. As you can see, this setup costs about 160 DU, perfect amount. We'll be doing this for all the lanes. We're going to put our defense here because the flyers will fly by. Our flame arrow will do some cheeky damage to them. With this lane, we're going to do the defense right here, as it's a choke point. No matter how many enemies there are, they have to squeeze through this little area. Same thing here, small choke point, going to make them squeeze through. We actually used 800 DU instead of 900 DU, which is pretty impressive. That leaves us with 200 DU for the flyers. We'll be using our poison sky gods. Honestly, any sky gods will do. You can even use your flame rods or LSA, but that's up to you guys. Make sure you don't put it too close to a lane. There are cold boards and they do dive into towers. I think one sky god in each lane should be enough. Gonna change back to the squire, just in case our training dummy gets destroyed. As soon as you start the game, a timer will appear. Again, if you don't gather enough gold within the timer, you'll blow up the crystal. 
If you look at the Goblin King, you'll see how much gold we need to gather. In this wave, we need to collect seven. Where do we get the gold in this map? In this map, there are golden wither beasts that will spawn. Once you kill them, they will leave behind a golden cluster. Give the golden cluster to the Goblin King and that will count as one. This is an example of why we're using the train dummy. The weather beasts are designed to bury themselves in front of a blockade and because our towers are in front of the blockade, they will die in the lane, which is perfect. We can pop to any lane, pick up the gold and give it to the king. Simple. Do keep in mind, once a weather beast bury themselves on the ground, they will heal others and weaken the barrier. So we need to keep an eye on all the training dummies health. As you can see, there are golden clusters spawned around the map. So if you cannot see any in the lane, look around the map and you'll find them scattered away. Now you've beaten the first wave, it only gets easier from here. They've given us a lot of green mana and we can start upgrading. Upgraded the wrong one? Well done Peter. I'm going to upgrade the flame to help on wave clearing. On the next wave we'll be upgrading the LSA. Remember to repair all the training dummies, they are buffing our defences so we don't want them to get destroyed. This time we have to collect 12 instead of 7 golden clusters. Sorry guys, I had to quickly do something. For you guys it was probably a second, but for me I was gone for 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Even with 1.1 million health, I'm still getting blown up. <laughs> when you die, it's not the end of the world. As long as you've been upgrading your defense, the towers should hold. Damn, that was close. We do have a squire equipped, so if it did get destroyed, we can always replace it. With this prime, I do recommend doing it with someone else so you can cover more ground with a friend. However, if you're a solo player like me, it is possible to do all the primes by yourself. It may seem impossible, but it's definitely achievable.
Before we start the wave, I'm going to upgrade all the LSAs. Any bosses that come should die. We want each lane to be able to handle itself so we can go off and find more golden clusters. Here we go. The strategy is very simple, it's constant rotating, scavenging golden clusters and repairing or upgrading the defences. That's why I said you have to be proactive in this prime because you're constantly moving. Assassins can catch you off guard. As soon as you see that purple mist on your hero, get to the closest defense you can go to. Ideally, you want to be someone who is fast or flexible. You can play as anyone, but to be really optimal and efficient, play as the gun witch. She can double jump and fly around. The monk, he can double jump so he's flexible. The dryad, she can fly and has a double jump. The Mystic has a lot of speed when she's full of pleasant, same as the Lava Mancer. Yeah, keep an eye on the map, it always gives you valuable information. Like when a tower is dying, it will flash either red or yellow. It tells you when a boss is coming, it gives you a lot of information. I don't know if I said this earlier, but these golden clusters always spawn randomly around the map. One wave they might spawn here, but the next wave they might spawn somewhere else. It's always random. Hopefully by watching me, you get a rough idea where they spawn. I've noticed these training dummies here always get damaged a lot. I don't expect you guys to use training dummies at all. This is an example of the bare minimum blockade can do with a power pylon shot. Frostfire Revenants can help wave clearing, so I do recommend using it, especially with grave infection or drenching strikes. Just be careful you don't spawn kill the golden wither beast. You cannot pick up a golden cluster when it's trapped at spawn. Didn't even notice the siege roller here.
On the last wave, we have to collect 15 golden clusters. We've got hex throwers now, so they're going to be a bit of an issue. Of course, we have Reflect Beam protecting our training dummies. It should be okay. So far, we've seen Cold Loads, Lady Orcs, Shield Goblins came a bit later, Assassins too, and now we have hex throwers. That's almost all the Chaos units, so luckily we put down our anti Chaos aura. As Assassin tried to be cheeky there, attacking me when I'm attacking the Sea Trawler. Look at this fella spinning. You go, baby. <laughs> oh. Alright guys, that's the last Prime 1, so you guys will be getting a Hyper Shard called Destructive Pylon. If you're wondering where to put this Hyper Shard, it's very good on your LSA, your Proton Beam, and your Boosterer. That's the main three I would recommend, however, you can put it onto your Sand Trap, the Oil Geyser, and the Geyser Trap. But that's up to you to experiment on that. That'll be the end of this video, if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more DE2 content. I'll see you guys next time, take care.